so before I start this video, I just wanted to preface it by talking about just how far technology has come the past 10 years that a Bluetooth speaker that can fit, you know, in the palm of my hand is just, it is so good and that I could be talking about it in this way. All right, now on to the video. So I've had this speaker for a while, but I've never really had the chance to talk about it because school and stuff has prevented me from making videos. But now I wanted to take the chance to talk about it. What's up guys, I'm Aaron the Tech Guy and this is the Ultimate Ears Wonder Boom 2. <laughs> So, you know, first, I just wanted to make fun of Yui's naming scheme. I mean, Wonder Boom? I and mean, come on, it just sounds kind of dumb. But the fact that I'm leading this video with a jive about the name of this speaker just goes to show how good it actually is. Not that I'm much of a judge because I'm not an audio audiophile, but from just a normal person's perspective, the Wonder Boom 2 is simply fantastic. I'll start with the thing that most of you came to see. Sound quality. How does this thing sound? Well, if you look at this graph from Sound Guys, you'll see that the, although lacking in sub bass, the audio is pretty much flat all the way through, so you'll get a nice balanced sound. In practice, however, it's a little more complicated. At about half volume, I'd say that the graph translates pretty well to real use, and maybe I'm just not an audiophile, but there's plenty of bass for me. However, at lower and higher volumes, the story is a little bit different. I've never tried maxing out the volume because I have zero desire to destroy my eardrums. I mean, this thing gets ridiculously loud, even at medium to, to low volumes. But all the reviews say that about 80% volume, the speaker starts to distort. I've also noticed that at really low volumes, the quieter, the quieter elements of songs or end videos, think background music, get just totally obliterated by the bass. Just to make sure I wasn't crazy, I played back the same video on my Yoga C940 at about the same volume and I could hear the background music just fine. This Yoga C940 has much less space. Although that might be a bad thing depending on what you like. Speaking of videos, there is occasionally a lag between the video and the audio while playing from the UE Boom Wonder Boom 2. So you might want to stay away from this as a movie speaker even though you can pair it in stereo mode. Soundstage is something that surprised me. When I got the Wonder Boom 2, I expected everything to be in mono, considering it's just, you know, one speaker. But that's not the case. Due to the 360 degrees of sound, a super cool feature by the way, if you're sitting near the speaker, you can clearly hear that the music is playing in stereo. As you move from move away from the speaker, however, the, sp the effect becomes less clear, which is to be expected. Let's take a listen to the Wonder Boom 2. I've lined up a few comparisons. My Yogo C940, which has the best small laptop speakers I've ever heard, a crappy Amazon Basics speaker that I got four years ago, and my family's Nest Hub. Unfortunately, I don't have the freaky ears that let you record in binaural. Binaural? Not sure how you pronounce it. But this recording should hopefully provide you with some useful data. As you can hopefully tell from this recording, the Wonder Boom 2 clearly sounds the best. It's, it sounds the fullest with the most bass and clearest highs, and the most detail. Next comes the Nest Hub, which also sounds pretty great, but it sounds a little bit less full. After that, the Yoga C940. Pretty damn good considering that the speakers inside the thing are about the, the size of my thumb, give or take. And finally, the Amazon Basic speaker, which just sounds like garbage. Legit, I think my iPhone sounds better than it. Obviously, none of these speakers compare to my AirPods Pro, but those are in a totally separate class, and I can't really record them anyway, so I wouldn't be able to tell you. Congratulations, you've made it to the, to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like, subscribe, just kidding. There's a lot more to a Bluetooth speaker than sound quality alone. Let's talk about the other parts of the speaker that are strong points first. The build quality on the Wonder Boom 2 is second to none. This thing is built like a tank. 
The outside is, bu is built of a fabric weave with thick plastic on both ends. It's IP67 rated and buoyant, meaning that you could take it into a pool and have no problem at all. I've never dropped it before, but I feel so strong that I wouldn't worry about tossing it around. You know, actually, after I wrote the script, I did drop my Wonder Boom 2 from a pretty far, pretty high height, and it's totally fine. So it just goes to show how strong it is. Another strong point of the Wonder Boom 2 is the Bluetooth connection. I was able to walk all the way around my house without experiencing any drops in connection. The Wonder Boom 2 also supports multiple device support. This is my first speaker barring Apple's jerry-rigged auto switching for AirPods with multi-device support. And I have to say, it's not the best. Sometimes it's super cool, but other times I'll get a notification in my computer and it'll shut off the music playing from my phone, which is super annoying. It's still nice that it's, that it's there though, and it's a nice touch. Although I think it would be better on proper headphones because those I might actually consider connecting to, to two devices at the same time. The Wonderboom 2 can actually connect to another Wonderboom 2 for stereo su support or another Wonderboom 1 for double the audio. Unfortunately, I cannot afford to get another Wonderboom 2 to test this, but I've heard it's pretty good. The final strong point of the Wonderboom 2 is the battery life. I can go weeks at a time without having to charge at all. However, this strong point leads me into the negative parts of the Wonderboom 2, because of course, it's a product, it's far from perfect. Let's start off with the things relating to the battery, because that's what I talked about last. First, there's no way to check the battery level on a connected device, like, you know, every other Bluetooth device ever. You have to press the volume up and down buttons at the same time, at which point it plays a sound to let you know the battery. So that's, you know, dead 50% or 100%, which is a very low level of granularity. Next, and possibly more annoyingly, the speaker saw his goddamn micro USB. They were nice enough to give me a decent cable that fits perfectly into, into the charging point, port, but still, every time I plug it in, I still worry it's gonna snap because micro USB just feels cheap. The next, the next annoying thing is, is, is that there's no yeah, mic or aux in. A mic would have been kind of nice to have calls with a few people around, and it also would have been nice to set one up as a Google Assistant device, because it just sounds so good. But alas, it's not gonna happen. The aux in would have also been useful for this, and it would have been, also, it would have been useful to connect an old MP3 player or an iPod. Even my old Amazon Basic speaker has a mic and aux in. I mean, come on. Finally, the sounds that this thing makes are just so dumb. And I know this is a minor thing, but the, but the Yui Boom is so, Wonder Boom 2 is so good that I have to nitpick. But I take a pleasing synth sound any day over whatever the heck this is. It would also be nice if you can go back from the speakers on itself. For some reason, you, you can only skip a track, but not go backwards. It's just weird and kind of just asinine. So, should you buy the Yui Wonder Boom 2? Well, if you find it on sale for 50 bucks like I did, 100%, grab it now. If you only find it for the normal price, it's still a pretty good deal. It has amazing sound quality, great battery life, and a pretty decent usability. As you can see, compared to speakers of a slightly lower caliber, it's fantastic, and especially compared to like laptop speakers and smart speakers. If I were to buy it again, I would check out the latest comparable speaker from JBL, which at the time of recording is the JBL Flip 5, but I haven't regretted my purchasing decision at all, and I think you'll be satisfied as well. Congratulations, you've made it to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications with the bell icon so you don't miss any of our future videos. As always, you're watching Aerod, the Tech Guy.